bookseller crow on the box. Tales from an empty bookshop. <laughs> Action. Good evening, everyone, and welcome Hello. to our book, Bubble Babble, uh, our latest up-to-date with what's going on uh, at the bookseller crow and all things crow and all things books. <laughs> <laughs> Books and all things crow. <laughs> Shall I start? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a moment. <laughs> Karen's having a moment. Um, well, the first book I was going to uh, mention was um, Kevin Barry's new book of short stories, um, which I must confess I haven't had a chance to read yet, apart from the beginning of the first short story, which... Um, it's great and reminded me I, of um, of a Harry Enfield sketch that he used to do most weeks at one time in his show. It's about a, um, an Irishman who lives alone who, who, who falls in love with a Polish girl working ah, in a cafe. Ah, the old Polish cafe um, sketch. Oh, right, yes. So I'm just going to read this a little bit. It says, it, when, when he's talking to her one day, and he said, it's like France, he said to her one sunny morning in June. And it was true. The fields of the mountain had all week idled with what seemed a continental languor, and the lower hills east were a Provencal blue in the, ha in the haze, and the lake, when he lowered himself into it, was so warm by the evening it didn't even make his midge bites sting. The heat, he tried again, makes the place seem like France. We wouldn't be used to it, passing out from it, ambulance on standby. His words blurted at the burn of her brown-eyed stare. She didn't lose the run of herself by way of a response, but she said yes, it was very hot, and he believed that something at least cousinly to a smile softened her mouth and moved across her eyes. He had learnt already by listening in the cafe that her name was Catherine, which was not what you'd expect for a Polish woman, but lovely. Mm. Lovely. Very nice. That goes there. Pride of place. Um, the next book that um, I'm pretty um, keen on is The Silence by Don DeLillo, new Don DeLillo book. Now he's he's quite old now and he doesn't write. I was going to say it's looking pretty thin books. for a Don DeLillo. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it is a thin book. But I was I was I was very taken by this quote from. Anne Enright in her review of it in The Guardian last weekend, which said, Delilo looks for the future as if it manifests in the present moment. He has done this for whole decades in which other writers have struggled with, for example, the invention of the mobile phone. Won't you ruin the plot? <laughs> At 83, he makes many contemporary writers read as though they're thinking, not even in the 20th, but in the 19th century, one in which the crowd did not exist, except perhaps as proles. That I think gets Delilo pretty good. And this is, um, when I, I first opened the flyleaf and, and, and was looking at it and it said, it's set in the year 2022, I thought, God, he's, he's, he's writing science fiction. <laughs> and then I had to remind myself that it's only kind of <laughs> two, two 18 time. months away. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we waited. Um, and this is, this is a, a, a book that kind of mirrors what we've been going through, um, but is is of a slightly different um, flavour, in that it's about um, the internet and everything else closing down, um, and, and what happens across a night of uh, the Super Bowl Sunday in 2022. Um, I think it's supposed to be very interesting. Yep, that's going up there. <coughs> and lastly, I was very chuffed to see that um, Faber have recently reissued uh, Gordon Burns' work in kind of fairly uniform editions. Uh, Gordon's often, certainly at the time when he was still alive and publishing, um, he referenced Delilo a lot, and uh, other people said that he was a sort of a UK version of of uh, of Don Delilo. Um, he was 
a very interesting journalist and, and novelist. Um, he wrote uh, a lot about kind of celebrity and um, newspapers uh, and the, the kind of manipulation of the of the two uh, to the point where with Born Yesterday which is a it is subtitled The News as a Novel where he took um, various news feeds for the better part of a year and turned them into a novel this is based in 2007 um, but I think in terms of um, our present experience with fake news and, and you know the stuff that's been Generated and fed to us, he, he kind of preempted an awful lot of, of what we're seeing now. I'd love to have seen what he would have made of uh, of, of Twitter and, uh, and and the rest of it. God knows what he would have thought of Trump. I was going to say, <laughs> do you think Donald Trump's read a bit of Golden Berlin? <laughs> I don't know. Probably not. But anyway, yeah. Um, and he used to pop into our shop. Yeah, we, I, I knew him. Years ago. Years ago, but uh, when we were about five, obviously. <laughs> that's right. Sadly, he's not with us anymore. No. But I recommend those. Any any of his books are, are really really good. And he could also rock a ponytail, couldn't he? He could. When he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> that's me done. Excellent. Um, so yeah, what we're going to what something we've released hot off the press is uh, a new. Um, campaign whatever you want to call it um, you might have seen on the internet that we have asked you all to keep us crowing and um, we just wanted to put the word out there which was to buy early and to buy often with us um, times are still tough but also we're coming up to Christmas and we felt like we needed to address um, certain things that are going on in the it, not only in in the current situation but also to do with the book supplies to let you know why we're why we're coming in at it as we are so John do you want to well yeah I mean the, there, are, there are two um, very important things one of them is that um, you know at the closer we get to Christmas we would normally be the shop would be rammed with people I mean I, I, I can distinctly recall one year going to the Walking out of the shop to go to the bank, and there were there were nine buggies in the in the front of the shop. <laughs> we clearly can't do that. We can fit one moment. in yeah, at the moment. <laughs> one and with the best will in the world, we can only fit you know six or seven people at a time. Well, so after that, it's just not safe. Yeah, uh, exactly. for any of us. Um, so it, th th there's going to have to be a lot of kind of strategic. Um, measuring out and, and, and planning but the other thing is that um, there's an awful lot of pressure being put on both uh, the supply chain of getting books to us and also publishers being able to keep books in stock um, because there was a backlog of books that were not published during the lockdown that came out after the lockdown and then there's also the books that publishers intended to publish at this time of year and, and the two are kind of fighting against each other. I suspect that they didn't do as large a print run as they would no. have done. Um, and so lots of books I think are going to be in pretty short supply um, the closer we get to Christmas and I don't think that the printers are necessarily going to be able to turn those around in time. So if you've got your eye on something that's pretty popular then I would my suggestion is to buy it now. Well, we were saying stay one step ahead, weren't we? <coughs> yes, you yeah, know, definitely. because um, otherwise we're all all going to be yeah. in a mess. Um, you lot and us lot <laughs> trying to to manage it all. Yeah. So we were. Uh, if there are various ways to get your books early, and also you don't even have to come to bookshop. There's order online, and we will wrap and send the books we can even write we've got some little cards made so we can write a little message to little someone in your family even if you don't like them we can put something rude um <laughs> and, so. and if, if we wrap it we've got something we got our, we've our got stickers sticker. we've, obviously yeah. the wrapping paper is is bigger than that That's, yeah. that would be silly yeah. that's kind of barbie sized but we can make your if you want yeah. to to have your book sent to somebody or sent to your home but 
ready wrapped yeah. then you just need to let us know o- online yeah yeah so that's um and there's various things online gift cards everything you can get from us so so just have a look into it and, and perhaps plan a little bit earlier than usual in terms of um online i mean it's always worth saying that if not every book can be on there because i put every book on there myself or one of my elves does <laughs> um, don't look at me <laughs> um, I'm too big to be an elf <laughs> if, if there's something you're looking for and it's not on our website then send us an email it's very easy for me to actually put it on the website pretty quickly um, or if you don't want to go through the website but do want to use email just use email that's, mm. that's fine you can find yeah. us yeah marvellous so that's that's and so Justine you are now going to well I've got one grown up book to talk about and it's just it's clo- it's, a, it's a book that's close to my heart funny enough um, mm-hmm. it's uh, the 50th anniversary edition of Ted Hughes's Crow wow. that uh, Blake Morrison says uh, is Hughes at his blackest and funniest a storming folk tale of guile guts and survival with a grinning anti-hero at its heart and uh, I have a little family story to tell about this speaking of anti-heroes grinning Mm -hmm. anti-heroes my dad at some point after this was first published maybe a little bit later sometime in the 70s bought everybody uh, in the family an edition of this for Christmas so everybody on Christmas morning Uncle Dave Auntie Pammy (laughs) Auntie Barbara Uncle Brian we all opened up our presents from uh, from dad and we each had one of those which was marvellous, except that 25 years later, when Faber issued another edition of it, he'd completely forgotten that he'd given one to everybody <laughs> for Christmas, and Christmas morning came round, and you all had we, another all one. Unwrapped this, <laughs> we all unwrapped it, and found that he'd given us another one. Oh, bless. But of course, he was unapologetic. He They're not great. the ones that we're selling. Or no. <laughs> and this edition is, is, is rather glorious, and it is. It's, uh, it's one of the classic modern poetry uh, collections, and I would definitely recommend that. You don't have to have the surname Crow to, to receive <laughs> no. one for Christmas. But it would be cool to buy one. From yes, it would, would be. Crow. Would be yeah, very yeah. cool. Sadly, we don't have any signed ones. <laughs> and then the rest of my offering... Oops, the rest of my offering uh, is uh, children's books, because this is where I'm stuck at the moment in my panic room. Um, like it or not, uh, this is where I direct operations on this side of the shop and uh, help um, everybody choose their children's books, because sadly, I, I can't... We can't have... Um, marauding little people wandering around not least because pre-pandemic there were certain books in this shop that were touched a thousand times by snotty little fingers Um, bless them Um, but I don't mind helping John doesn't mind helping Karen doesn't mind helping I don't mind helping in fact it's been a very useful exercise um, in in doing it and the books are all looking very neat and tidy Mm. without being messed up by browsers I've got a little theme going here, a couple of squirrels. Uh, Smriti Halls, she is a rising star of the um, children's picture book um, world currently. This is a lovely, silly uh, book about friendship and uh, overbearing, uh, over, the overbearing nature of friendships. But it has a lovely ending and I love you a lot. Um, this is another squirrel picture book. We Picture books tend to run in, in uh, themes over the years. Sometimes you get loads of picture books on tigers. Sometimes it's <laughs> meerkats. This year's theme, autumn theme, appears to be... Squirrels. Squirrels. This one, uh, the leaf thief, bless him. He, I can't work out where all the leaves are going. He reckons Aww. they're all getting nicked, but of course they're Being falling blown. off the trees. Uh, right at the end is... Uh, I think we could do a spoiler here. Um, mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> I haven't read it yet. Something. <laughs> Someone has stolen all the grass. <laughs> hey. oh. Love these I'll two. Them up for you. Thank you. A uh, little bit more um, sublime now. Uh, this is The Dancer's Dream. Uh, 
wonderful friend of the bookshop, Lizzie Stewart, used to be local now, still South London, has illustrated this story by uh, Catherine Woodfine, which is the real story of the Nutcracker. Right. So you think you know the Nutcracker, but what about the story of the Nutcracker? Mm. So this is a beautiful illustrated story of how the ballet came to be written and it stars the actual people, the very first Clara, the ballet dancer that danced the very first Clara. Um, it's absolutely beautiful to look at. I am just going to find, it's almost, look at that. Wow. Degas-esque. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Just stunning. Yes. Uh, uh, as soon as I opened it, uh, uh, Lizzie Stewart has really, oh, oh, that's, yeah. really done a fine, fine job. And Woodfine, she's a great writer anyway. Um, super story. And uh, who knew that uh, actually when it was first staged, it didn't go particularly well. Mm. It, wasn't, it wasn't the smash hit, That's, the smash yeah, Christmas hit that it has become. It has become. <laughs> uh, would you like to put that yeah. up for me? Um, just a couple more to show you. Oh, how do we pronounce that? How do we pronounce Michael? Some people say Shabon. Some people say Shabon. Shabon. So I'm, his, going, I'm going with Shabon. So it's, this is an adult uh, <laughs> writer, mainly novelist uh, of American um, uh, governance. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, and he, it, on the on the surface, is written what looks like a couple of pretty macho kids yeah. picture books. Uh, they are gloriously illustrated by Jake Parker. And they're uh, not macho then? <laughs> no, they're, they're... They're silly, are they? Look. Funny. They are. Um, the <coughs> he's a bit depressed. He's a story. bit depressed in that one. Uh, <laughs> what did he say? He's a bit blue uh, and... <laughs> oh, <fuck>. um, <laughs> Yeah, he, he, just, he, he gets fed up with fixing people, and he just wants to lie he's in his room out. with he's his feet out. on his this. bed. He's, he's tired. Like but I song. don't move a muscle. Let the new guy handle it. Let Glue Girl or Squid Lad or Monkey Butt or whoever Ooh, try to say butt. Awesome City. Maybe then we'll, people around here will appreciate me a little bit more. Oh. Maybe they won't forget my birthday. Oh. And right at the end of the first one, <laughs> just when you got, got used to this. Hey, uh, character, awesome man. Um, right at the very end. I don't, I, it's the spoiler alert again. I'm sorry, guys. Um, when I get there, my secret identity mom is waiting for me with a plate of plain old cheddar cheese crackers and chocolate milk. I'm so happy to see her. I throw a power grip around her too. Aww. Lovely, lovely there stuff. There we go. Great. Stuff. There you go. You know. Oh, no, I thought <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. And I'm finally, really just uh, really another there. friend of the bookshop. We know so many talented people, and they buy books from us, and they come in and speak to us, and hang out with us, and uh, they do things like decorate our whole window. Mm -hmm. um, um, Magda's a rising star. Uh, she both writes and illustrates, and this is her latest offering, which is a cracking story. Um, about a penguin who discovers a flippy, sorry, a red. flippy, a red flippy flappy thing. A red a flippy, flippy flappy thing. I wonder what the red flippy flappy thing Might be. is. Uh, anyway, great story, uh, lots of fun to be had, marvellous il illustrations throughout, and coming to a bookshop window uh, near you very soon. I'm looking forward to that, cheering the West yeah. Street up, cheering the triangle up. Yeah. Uh, cheering us all up. This, yeah, very soon. Yeah. Excellent stuff. <laughs> Pete. Marvellous. Fact, sooner than soon. Sooner, sooner, than soon. sooner than soon. Already sooner here. Than this already is, here. <laughs> sooner than this is brought Probably out. already done. <laughs> <laughs> it's already done. Well, <laughs> while we've been speaking, it's been painted. Okay. Thank you, Justine. Um, are we going on to our special guest yet? We are. We are now going over. Moving studios to our special guest, Bobble, Ben Moore. Hi, guys. 
thank you for having me and may I say how gorgeous you're all looking today. Great. Um, so way back in January, before everything, I came to Bookseller Crew on the Hill and did a reading of what was going to be my new Edinburgh show. That didn't happen. Uh, uh, but it was fantastic. It was a fundraiser for Stoke the Crow. And it was a piece called Who Hears Lost and Other Things, which is now available in the shop, uh, signed copies, and you get a free badge with it. Oh, yeah. Um, essentially, it's the story of an architect and an artist going on a strange road trip of the soul. Uh, they visit various buildings, um, various places. Uh, but there's lots of digressions, and it's kind of like a mood piece about what we make in our lives, within ourselves and with other people. Um, also included in the book um, are pieces from the last few decades. Um, from the 2010s, there's a piece called The Predicates, which was sort of like written for an alternate history version of Northampton. Uh, from the 2000s, there's a piece called Glove Story, uh, which is about lost gloves. Uh, from the 90s, uh, there's a short children's little fable. And from the 80s, there's a monologue that I did uh, in a way back in a dinghy. It's very weird. And there's one-page trailers of... Um, the other two shows that I've brought to Bookseller Crow in the last few years, Pronoun Trouble and Book Talk, Book Talk, Book. It's nice and it's got a nice cover and it's lovely. Uh, also available at the shop are obviously each of us and more trees to climb. Good luck with buying those. I think they're great. Obviously, I would say that I wrote them. Uh, books that I'm recommending at the moment. So... I just read the new Christopher Priest book um, called The Evidence. Um, it's another one set in the Dream Archipelago. Honestly, if you've never picked up any of the Christopher Priest Dream Archipelago novels, please go ahead. Uh, I'll probably start at the beginning with Affirmation, maybe then The Islanders, The Adjacent, The Gradual. Um, this one is perfectly standalone, but it's sort of weird if you don't know quite what's going on with the Dream Archipelago, but it's very rewarding uh, if you do. Uh, other things I've loved recently... Oh, I just started the new Emily St. John Mandel, The Glass Hotel, which I love. Um, oh, this is a good book I've loved this year called Optic Nerve by Maria Gainzer. Am I holding that right? There we go. Um, it's Argentinian. If you like something like um, um, Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin, it's not really quite like that. It's more about art and um, the lead character, the person's relationship with paintings and uh, with their family. But it's terrific. It's really good. I, I don't know quite why it's got that cover. Maybe I've got a I've got a proof copy of that. Sorry. Um, what else have I loved? Oh, David Quantic's Night Train has been brilliant. I really loved this, um, along with his previous book, uh, which is called All My Colours. Highly recommend that too. Um, I loved Weather by Jenny Offill. <laughs> uh, if you've read Depth of Speculation, you know quite her style. Um, it's sort of broken up and broken down, but it's beautifully written, beautifully paced. Uh, in terms of non-fiction, this is a good tip. Notes from an Apocalypse by Mark O'Connell. Um, you know, quite relevant this year, I think you'll agree. Um, this is another book I've loved this year. It was recommended on an online book group called Pobby and Dingen. don't know if it's available, but Ben Rice. Uh, all these books will be listed at the end and uh, very highly recommended. Uh, I know this is available in, um, in the shop because it's awesome. Uh, their brilliant careers, the fantastic lives of 16 extraordinary Australian writers by Ryan O'Neill. Uh, it's a book about books. It's a book about writers. It's a novel, 
but it doesn't feel like a novel. It's doing extraordinary tricks on your head and uh, on what it, um, the way the story's being told, and uh, it's hugely entertaining. I highly recommend it. It was one of my books of the year 2019. But this is my book of the year for 2020. Um, please buy it because you will thoroughly enjoy it. Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. Uh, brief explanation, a sort of down on her luck uh, character is contacted by an old school chum who's done quite well for herself, who says, uh, can she do a job for her? And I'm not gonna say anything more, but honestly, terrific read. Thanks for having me. As I say, all these books will be listed. Uh, happy reading and stay well. Hey! Hey! Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Brilliant. We, we love you. Um, that's great. Yeah, and and if anybody else um, who who's a a massive star like Ben, <laughs> no, anybody um, <laughs> wants to uh, send us in a, a little film of their own recommendations, then we'll put it in the next one yeah. that we do. And uh, yeah, we, we'd be really nice thing to do yeah so feel free to send it to us if you want to yeah talking about a book you've enjoyed this year or, or whatever um yeah be really customer endorsements yes really endorsements. exciting and you don't to have, have to have done end the fringe or whatever to no do. no or acted with meryl street no indeed <laughs> no it could cut down on the audience but yes um, <laughs> But um, right, so now it's my turn. I'm going to go through. Um, I have four books. Pile. Yeah, have, she's got I loads. Have a small pile. <laughs> I'm not going to talk long. Um, I uh, my first recommendation is Kay Tempest's book on connection. It's her first uh, book of non-fiction, and it's an essay about connection. Um, and they have written. Um, I think a very passionate account of um, of this was sort of slightly preceded lockdown, but I think it's still really relevant because it is about um, us as a, as a sort of community being disconnected and disconnected from ourselves and how creativity can um, uh, basically is, is a way of us getting back in contact with ourselves and each other. It's also a really beautiful reminder of the power of performance and um, connecting through being together in a, in a sort of live art space and so I think it's really thought-provoking and it made me feel very passionate so I would say anyone um, who is a fan of Kay Tempest or it's, it's I thought it was gonna be poetry but mm -hmm. she's um, you know she's obviously oh, they sorry is uh, connected with themselves as well and so it's slightly about um, the political the personal and and the wider remit uh yes can i talk for my turn do this is it my turn <laughs> yes um i have just watched miranda july's latest film kajillionaire you might have seen it i'm not sure it's, well, it's, it's, it's unfortunately come out at a time when cinemas there's an, not many cinemas it's been open. in my timeline i do that that's the scrolling yeah. of my my twitter feed and i absolutely loved her latest film i'm a big miranda july f uh, fan one of um the books i recommend for the creative writing group that that um do the courses here is her book of short stories um that we published a few years ago and this is her first novel and it's been out for a few years but I haven't read it um, and I've had it sat I think for five years next to my bed and now is the time that's right it's about I can't believe it She's not the, you're not the only one <laughs> the pile and but, but sometimes a I book think is gonna have to have a jingle for this Karen's catch up <laughs> <laughs> well I am catching up um, but there's something, sometimes books, you pick them up and they're not right, and this is the right time to read this. Um, I don't know, Justine, if you've ever had a bit of rough and tumble with another woman in the sense of violence, like as in actually physically, like men have, you know, like they're sort of play fighting. Oh, they do pup puppy fighting. Yeah, well, this is all about how women, how a sort of potentially violent 
play fighting situation can turn into many different things. It's looking at female violence and sexuality. It sort of what and, reminds me a little bit of Evie Wilde talking about the pain of being tickled and how yeah. she absolutely yeah. hated that. Yeah. That sort of help, that sense of helplessness and, and the fact that that somebody else was doing that to her, even though yeah, it, was, it became sinister without... I, I would say this is odder than that. Okay. This is, if you know Miranda July, she's a, she's a universe of herself, she's a performance artist, and I couldn't recommend this high enough. Um, I, I found it, it's, I've never read anything like it. Hmm. I shall thus stay away. <laughs> <laughs> it's right, it's not giving me any ideas. Um, <coughs> that I already haven't had. <laughs> um, I, another book, me and Ben are in coots on this one, Jenny Offill. Um, Weather. If you haven't read her first book, uh, her second novel, but it, it was out a few years ago, Debt of Se Speculation. Mm. There is another novel. Yeah, her first novel. No, there's another one. Another one? Which is not published in this country, which I imported from the States. What? Yeah. More recent than. No, no, older. Well, it's an elusive world of Jenny mm. Jenny. Sorry, Offil. to man's <laughs> Jenny Offil. Offil spell Offil yeah, off off splain. Splain. Um Well, however many novels she's written, this is brilliant and uh, written in the sparse flash fiction style. Um, very well written. Lots of um, beautiful ideas. It's on climate change. It's on philosophy. It's funny, and it's it gives you a real flavour of New York. Um, oh. Oh. Otherwise, sorry, Willa. Um, <laughs> Deep sigh. Uh, my latest book, I haven't read, but I absolutely love Emma Klein's The Girls, which was a massive, Ooh. massive um, and well, you know, really well done book. Uh, the Girls was, what I'm trying to say is that it, for every... Oh, what am I trying to say? Well, you're trying to say that it's one of those books that was a bit of a publishing phenomenon. Yeah. phenomenon. It was, you know, one minute, uh, well, she was in the shop. One minute she was, you know, it was a. Was a, she? What, Emma Klein? Yeah, they brought us in. I, I met her. <laughs> yeah. You know, one minute she was just a sort of a, a young uh, new writer. The next minute she was top of the bestseller. bestseller list. And it wasn't because of marketing. No. It wasn't because the publishers knew that they had something no. really hot. It was because she wrote a genuinely interesting page turner of a book set at a certain time uh, in history in the set in the 60s um and, and it was one of those classic word of mouth books yeah. that, that just people couldn't get enough it of. was brilliantly written mm. about teenage friendship mm. and how far you would go um and this is her new collection of short stories which are very unsettling mm. and i would i think she's a, an amazing writer and annoyingly yeah. young <laughs> and brilliant so that's all <laughs> um, are you going to say something um, about our next filmed event Jonathan? our next filmed event is going to go out on 12th, 12th, 12th November November, November yeah. and it's with our friend Melissa Harrison and her wonderful new book the Stubborn Light of Things, mm. which is um, a collection, basically, of her journal journalism, um, writing natural history. Um, and hopefully, I mean, lockdown willing, we'll be doing an interview in the shop. If yeah. not, we will presumably be doing it on... In the park. Zoom. Or on <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> in, either in the park or on Zoom. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's going to happen. Go, it's going to... One way or another. She, it's, she is a nature nutcase, <laughs> and I would recommend anybody listens to her podcast, which is The Stubborn Light of Things also. Which is now finished, but you, it's yeah. archived. Mm, yeah, it's um, glorious. But we've known Mel for... Since... The, uh, publication of our first book which we did an event with for and Play. Uh, I think Play, we've yeah. done event we did South event London book that was in fact she was here with Kerry Hudson um, oh my goodness was Jamie Attenberg and Jamie Attenberg they were oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry, can you just name drop there no, I thought no because they did Kerry yeah, they did, and yeah. Melissa did one and oh. the one was yeah. that 
Well, Jamie, go. Did, Jamie did close. It all merges <coughs> and blurs. Yeah. Anyway. And they've all been here. Yeah. Marvellous. So that wraps things up. So, um, yeah, we will be doing a uh, filming another book, Bubble Babble, which will be a special one or two for recommendate, recommending <laughs> all the um, books that you could get as Christmas gifts. Um, and that will be coming very soon. So watch this space. Should we um, little, do a little... Yeah, tinkle? and cheers. And yes, yes. Cheers. cheers to um, everybody. Keep, keep safe, keep healthy, and we'll see you soon. Eh? We'll see you soon. And send us your films. <laughs> yeah. They can find you a book for your girlfriend, your husband, your girl, or your boy. And if you've got a need for an uplifting meet, Justine and Jonathan. Good evening, can everyone, and welcome book to our enjoy. latest book bubble bubble. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? the bookseller crow on the hill. Crystal Palace Hill, it is. But you can order online. <laughs>